Hi, Cindy here from Out of Pocket. And I have, this is the video that we never knew we were going to make. It is an unsolved mystery of an electrical nature, which is not a good thing. I'm gonna take you with me as I describe what the problem is, and you're gonna come along with us to solve it later. As you know, if you saw our earlier videos, we have a Yeti rechargeable battery, Yeti 1000. The van, the pocket, is, was plugged in, and we went to plug in the Yeti into that 120. We wanted to plug it in here, and only to find that the outlet was dead. We could not get it to reset. We kept hitting the reset button, wouldn't reset. So then, ever enterprising, we decided to try using number two outlet right here. This doesn't have a reset. This was just always dead. Now we're starting to wonder, is the problem with the power coming into the pocket? Is it the, the shore power lines that are causing this problem? We use a third party adapter uh, for the shore power when it's parked into the garage. Because literally we're two feet away from the wall and the sh factory standard cable is enormous. So it's a lot easier for us. We decide that we're going to unplug the third party cable that we usually use and plug in the factory standard cable that they gave us. While we're switching the cables, we have a chance to reset the outlet on right here. And it takes. We're able to reset it as long as it's not plugged into the wall. Then Jim plugs it in with the factory standard cable. And immediately, that outlet pops. An alarm starts going off. We don't know where it's coming from. We've never heard it before. He rushes into the pocket, determines the alarm's coming from the circuit box, and immediately closes all the circuits. So we have a mystery. An electrical mystery. We've got three outlets, three 120 outlets. One trips every time it's plugged into shore power. We cannot get it to stay live. The other second one never is live. It's just always dead. And the third one is live when it shouldn't be live because all of the circuit breakers have been closed. So we don't know what's going on. <laughs> so you get to come with us as we debug this problem. Hey everyone, Jim here. I thought I'd give our dealer a call who was down in Alabama. Basically they said it has to be looked at. We are not going to be able to drive down to Alabama to look at it. So they said we can call up a Winnebago dealer in our area. So I did. I called the closest one to us. And basically they said they don't really take any new appointments at this time. But at this point, I'm not going to be able to have it looked at by a dealer. So... I think over the next few days I'll do some investigation myself. Alright. Time to understand what the electrical system on this thing is like. So in the manual, in the electrical section, there is an AC reverse polarity alarm. An audible alarm. This is supposed to trigger if the incoming neutral wire and lead wire are connected backwards. Okay, so this outlet is interesting because it was acting strange when we originally found this issue. So right now, I'm plugged into the home outlet um, in our garage with an extension cable, regular home extension cable, and an RV connector. That's usually what we do when we come back to keep the fridge running, keep the batteries charged up or whatever. We don't usually use the AC power for anything. So right now I have all the circuits off on the AC system. And the other day, this, this outlet, this is an outlet tester, was acting strange. So I'm going to see what I find with this as I try to turn on the circuit. One and two seem to be the two circuits that affect receptacles one way or another. So the next one I'm going to turn on is the first breaker that says receptacles. Nothing. What about this receptacles slash something else that I can't read? Nothing. So this just seems dead. Now the third one, for some reason, is also a 15 amp circuit like the other two. This one says microwave. Aha! That looks good. Two yellow lights mean that is properly wired. So that outlet on the microwave circuit is good. That is very confusing. So all the receptacle breakers are on. So now I'm going to go back and tech check this other one, these other two again. 
and look at that. This one is also reading fine. So this is completely different behavior than we experienced on Friday. Right now, everything seems to be acting normally. Time to do some more troubleshooting. Okay, so this is how we're set up right now. This is the main breaker, the 30. That's on. All three of these 15 amp circuits are on. The air conditioner is still off. Receptacle, one. Receptacle slash something. And microwave. Boom, boom, boom. So those are all on, and right now, everything seems to be operating normally. Although this thing, when I turned on those breakers, it's really running the cooling fan inside this power unit. So that's suspicious, but... I don't know what this means yet. So what I'm going to do is turn all these back off. And I'm going to switch this to the factory power cable, the big thick black one um, that they gave us with the van. And I want to see if it acts any differently with that connector. So just so you know what I'm talking about, this is how I was plugged into our home circuit, the small adapter, um, which is normally what we do. We don't run the air conditioning or anything, so we don't have any high loads. It's much more convenient than working with this thing that comes with the van. This is a standard RV power cable, probably for campers that are a lot bigger than ours. And it comes with this little adapter on the end so that you can plug it into a regular outlet. So I'm going to plug us in using this next. Okay, now I'm going to plug this back in here. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, do you see that? All the breakers are off right now. Off, 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 off. I haven't touched them. That, something is live there. That should not happen. I don't even want to turn on any of the other breakers at this point. This is a bad adapter or a bad cable. I don't know, but that, that says that that's wired wrong. Red, nothing, yellow. Red, nothing, yellow. Boy, that's small. Hot and ground are reversed. Just so people don't think I'm crazy. Okay, you can see right now, this thing has some sort of electricity coming to it, telling us it's wired incorrectly. If we look at the panel right now, main breaker 30, off, off. That says off, that says on. Receptacles, off, off, off. Air conditioner, off. Everything's off. Okay, let's see. Look at that. Red, nothing yellow. Wires reversed. It's messed up. Now remember, all the breakers are off right now. There should not be any power whatsoever going to these outlets. So something, maybe, how can that happen? I don't even know how that can happen. So here's, here's what I'm thinking. I'm not an electrician by any means, but I've wired a bunch of outlets and circuits and things at, at my house. There are three wires. There's the hot wire, the neutral wire, and the ground wire. Normally a circuit breaker is only on the hot wire. The other two wires are all connected all the time. So if this cable that I now have plugged in is switching the hut to be on one of the other wires, then it would bypass the circuit breaker in theory which could be why these outlets are, are live right now. So that's a possible explanation. I'm going to take that cable back off and we're going to keep troubleshooting it with the with the other cable back. Okay, so I'm plugged back in with that yellow adapter and the home extension cord. The circuits are all still off. I've plugged this in and we're going to make this one live again. First with the main breaker. Nothing. That's what I'd expect. And then circuit three called microwave is right here. Bingo. So this one is on the microwave circuit, even though we don't have a microwave. So I'm going to test these other two outlets and see if they're all on the same circuit or if they're on different circuits. Okay, so this outlet is not live, even though I have the so-called microwave circuit on. So the microwave circuit is being turned off, and I'm going back to circuit one called receptacles. Bingo. So that outlet is on a different circuit breaker. Here we go. It's on. So the two outlets in the front are on circuit one called receptacles and the one outlet in the back is on the circuit called microwave. 
So this Circuit Breaker 2 says Recepts slash something. It might be C-O-N-V. It could be the converter. And the fact that that fan kicks in. So my theory is that circuit could be the one that feeds to recharge the 12 volt batteries, which feed to all those little USB receptacles and, and auto receptacles. So and the reason the fan's kicking in is because the batteries probably need to be recharged. So as soon as I turn that on, it says charge the batteries. That's probably drawing a lot of power, heat, fan comes on. That would be an explanation for this circuit too and why it's behaving like this. Okay, so I have the factory cable back in again. You can see this outlet is indicating that's wired wrong. All the circuits are off. What I did want to do just to kind of complete the cycle here is we did have an alarm going off on this panel once in the past. I'm going to flip on the main breaker. I'm going to flip on the microwave circuit. I want to see if these lights change and I want to see if we get that alarm back again. So here we go, main breaker. Any change? No. Here we go, microwave. Changed. So there has to, nope, but I'm not getting the alarm, which is interesting. I wonder if that would get triggered by the DC circuit. Maybe it's the one that has the, the uh, alarm on it, so you don't. There it is. That is the converter circuit. So that appears to be the one. And now the fan's running, so it obviously just tried to draw some power, set off the alarm. Okay, so that's what the alarm sounds like. From what I can tell, that alarm is present on the DC charge circuit. Um, and this cable's bad, so now we'll have to see what we can do about that. Okay, so it seems like we've shown that the factory cable is bad. When this thing's plugged in, we have problems. When this thing's plugged in, seems to generally be working now anyway. And just to prove it, I ordered the short RV cable, which we plan to use with our generator in the future. I'm going to do a video about the generator, uh, what it can power, and details about that in the future. But this also works. So I called our dealer back and I said, I believe we have a bad cable. They said to put in a warranty claim, they have to look at it in person. I explained what I'd done, offered to send him a video or a summary, couldn't do it, so he suggested that I call Winnebago directly. So I called them, got a customer service person on the phone, explained our findings with the cable, what I'd done to test it, and they said they'd send us a new one. The new cable arrived, so let's check it out. I'm going to try really hard not to cut into it. Didn't take too long either, which was good. huge. <laughs> Here we go. The new cable is attached. Now to turn on some circuits to see how it works. The main. Nothing happens as we expect. Circuit one, which isn't that one. And you can see right now, nothing's on, which is perfect. The old cable was that miswired indicator. And three, the microwave circuit. And look at that too yellow it's properly wired and now circuit two and no alarm I think we have a winner I think we got to the bottom of the root cause which was a bad factory shore cable we do have one unexplained symptom though and that's that that outlet down underneath the passenger seat initially didn't work somehow that ground fault circuit interrupt circuit wouldn't reset, I guess, when I closed all the circuit breakers on, off, we did all these things, somehow it freed itself up. Seems to be working now, but that's something that we'll have to keep our eye on. One useful thing that did come out of this whole exercise, now I know what all the circuits do, what they're connected to, what the labels mean, what it, the microwave circuit does, what the converter circuit does. I could not find a diagram to explain these things in the manual. The other thing that came out of this process was if you have a warranty issue, we weren't able to get an appointment locally. Um, we can make some other calls, but initially we couldn't get an appointment. So that's something for you to be aware of if you're going to buy one, one of these vehicles out of state. Research beforehand who will do warranty service in your area and make sure you have that locked down. So I hope you found this fun and exciting, getting to the bottom of this problem with us. Um, if you enjoyed it, 
please like and subscribe. Until then, we'll see you next time.